This is the second video from the introduction to linear transformations. In this video, we're going to look at a few examples very similar to the homework. Here's the first example that is in the book. Um, it says, let A be the following matrix, and they have a vector U, a vector B, and a vector C, um, and define a transformation T from R2 to R3 by our standard matrix transformation. So that, and they just define it for you, AX is equal to, they um, have here at the A, times the standard X, X is an R2, so that's why it has two entries there. And if you do a matrix multiplication, you would get this row times this column, giving you the first row, this row times this will give you the second row, and this times this will give you the third row. So what they would like you to do is find T of U, the image of U under the transformation where U is given here. So let's go ahead and do that. So T of U is equal to A times U. So here's A and here's the U. So what is that going to be equal to? First of all, this is a three by two matrix, and this is a two by one matrix. So the resulting matrix should be a three by one matrix from these two. And what is that gonna be? So if I take the first row in this column, we would get two plus three, which would equal five. And the next entry is going to be the um, second row, first column. So that's going to be 6 plus a negative 5, which is 1. And then finally, the third uh, row is going to be the third row in this first column, which is negative 2 minus 7 which is negative nine. And you can see on the right hand side is a picture of that transformation. So it's in R2, so it's a two dimensional space, it takes the vector two uh, um, on the X, negative one or two on the X one, um, negative one on the X two, and it puts it into a R3, three dimensional space which is going to be the resulting vector is 5, 1, negative 9. Which you go 5 along the x1, 1 along the x2, and negative 9 down. Okay, part B. Find an x and r2 whose image under t is b. So that is going the other way around. We want to solve for x. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, what we want to do is find an x so that t of x equals b. And what is t of x? That's ax. So we want ax equals b. And we would like to find the x, and the x is going to be in R2. So here it is. Here's the a, um, if you remember from above. The x is in R2. And here's the b. So if you look above here, that was the a and the b right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and multiply these together. So this would imply that we would have our, again, we're going to have a 3 by 1. This is a 3 by 2, the same thing as here, 2 by 1. It's going to be a 3 by 1. And it, the first row is going to be this times this, x1, minus this times this, 3x2. The next row is going to be this row times this column, 3x1 plus 5x2. And finally, we'll have negative x1 plus 7x2. And that better equal to 3, 2, negative 5. So to solve that, looks looks like a... Um, Reduction problem. 
And if you just looked at the coefficients of that matrix, we had a 1, negative 3, 3, 3, 5, 2, negative 1, 7, and negative 5. So I'm just going to add a line right there. And I copied this from the book, so I don't have to do this from um, section 1.4. But we can just row reduce this by getting a 0 here, getting a 0 here, uh, then getting a 1 here, so they divide everything by 14. And then getting a zero there. If you do that, those steps, you will end up with this matrix. It looks like, oh, and then they got a zero here too as well. Uh, so that way it makes it a little bit easier. So clearly it looks like x1 is 1.5 and x2 is negative 0.5. So that is the image. That is the x. Part C asks, is there more than one x whose image under t is b? So if you go back up and look at c, that was what the question was. And what's the answer? Well, we know that um, from part b, um, equation 2, we know that there's exactly one answer. Here it is. So it is unique, and there is more than one Yes. Part D, what's part D? Determine if C is in the range. And if you look up, C is 3, 2, 5 instead of 3, 2, negative 5. So let's go ahead and do that here. What are we asking for? We're asking if C is in the range. And it is in the range if C equals T of X. And what is T of X again? It's AX for some x and r2. Just want to know if I put it in terms of what that's what c was. There's where a is. It's in this equation, and that's x. And again, if I multiply that out, that's 3, 2, 5 that are equal. The same matrix we got for part b. And again, that looks like a uh, system of equations that we can solve using row reduction. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I copied this from the book. And here it is. So um, again, I'll add a line here. And we go ahead and we, again, get zeros here. Get a 1 here. Um, Oh, I guess they switched these first. Sorry, they got a 1 there, and then they got a 0 here. But either way, um, notice how this is a little bit different than when it was a negative 5 here. Now we get 0 equals negative 35, and that is inconsistent. So there is no C. C is not in the range. Okay, we cannot have that C first one we can have, the second one we cannot. The second example in the book uh, gives a matrix um, A and the same uh, matrix transformation, just written a different way, X into AX. Um, and they just give you the example, but the question might be, right, what um, projection, we'll give a few more that does not give you the answer. Um, what does T project? So if you look at AX here, so the X going into AX, you'll notice that if you multiply just a general X in R3, the last one will always be zero. So this would be the first row times the first column would be just be x1, right? Because it'd be x1 plus zero plus zero. The second entry would be the second row with this column. So that would be x2, zero, x2, and zero. And the third one is always going to be zero because zero plus zero plus zero. So it says that it projects onto the x1, x2 plane very simply. It shows a nice little picture over here in figure three of the book where no matter what points you're giving x1, x2, it's always going to go down to that x1, x2 plane. 
Let me give you some more examples of that on our own. Here is the same thing, but it doesn't give you the answer. Um, I'm going to do uh, from R2 to R2. Let T be from R2 to R2 defined by our same matrix um, transformation, where A is a 2 by 2 matrix. What does X going to AX project, that transformation project, for the following? So let's look at A um, for this vector. Sorry, matrix. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let X be an R2. And so X is going to look something like that. And I'm going to look at A times X. So A times X, here's A and here's X. And if I multiply that out, again, this is a two by two. This is a two by one. So the answer should be a two by one. And I'm going to get the first entry is going to be x1 plus 0. And the second entry is going to be 0 and a negative x2. So what does that mean? Well, if I graph the original x1 comma x2, it's that point right there. And then I plot the same, it's the same x1. And now it's going to be a negative x2. It's going to look like that. So it's going to project a reflection through the x1 axis. And that's the answer. So see if you can try b. What was b again? pause the video and see if you can try B, C, and maybe even D, um, where the negative one is now on that first diagonal instead of the second. Here's the solution. Um, so I'm just going to do a shorthand here. So if we have here X, going towards AX. So here's AX. Um, again, that same X1, X2. Now if I do this, we get negative X1, X2. What is that? That's a reflection through the X2 axis. If you want to see that on the picture up above, we can take that same X1, X2, but now it's going to be a negative X1, comma X2. And you can see where it's a reflection about x2. Part C. What is that? Well, we're going to look at A. So here's what C is, if you remember. You can go back up and see there's C and there's D. You can pause that and try those first if you want. So here it is. So I'm going to take a times x here. And this time, since the ones are along this diagonal instead of this one, it's going to switch the x1, x2. So this one would be 0 times x1 plus x2. And then this one is going to be x1 plus 0, x2. Switches them. So what does that do? So if I take a point, say 1, 2, right there, and now I make it 2 comma 1, give me right there. So this would be the original x1, x2. This is now going to be x2 comma x1. It's going to project it along the line x2 equals x1. For part D, it's a little more difficult. So I'm going to save that to the next video. So go ahead and open up the next video to watch the solution to part D. What was part D? There it is right there. You can try it um, before you open up the next video. Hope that helps.